So there was a headline on Bloody Elbow. And before I go any further with this, I am not attacking in any way. I'm asking a question, but the headline on Bloody Elbow said, why has Korean combat sports exploded while Japanese combat sports have been left behind? I don't know that I have a terrific answer to that, but I do have a question to it, which is since when did Korean combat sports explode? That surprised me. South Korea and North Korea can test in the Olympic Games freestyle and Greco-Roman wrestling. They can test it quite well. That's where it ends. They don't go run off with a team championship. They're not ever in a hunt for a team championship, but they're also not messing around. The guys they put on the mat are very good. North Korea, by example, only contests two Olympic sports. Did you guys know that? In the Olympic Games, two sports are contested by the North Koreans. Ping pong and wrestling. But they contest both freestyle and Greco-Roman. And the people that they send out of the country and they put on the mat are serious competitors. And they win a lot of medals. But as far as a team hunt goes, as far as enough to say they exploded, South Korea represents a number of sports. They do well in boxing. They do do well. Even historically, if you remember back when Roy Jones, who quite frankly was robbed, Roy was robbed, but when Roy got a silver medal in the Olympic Games, he lost to a South Korean. South Korea has done well in boxing. They do do very well in the Olympics. Kale Sanderson won his gold medal, beat a South Korean in the finals. Kenny Monday, South Korean for the Olympic championship. But man, I'm, I'm jumping back a ways. I don't know that wrestling-wise, it's enough to say that they've exploded. Okay, great. Let's move on. They do very well in judo. They win a lot of medals, and that counts as a combat sport. They do very well in taekwondo. That counts. That's a combat sport. But when you look at MMA, you look at prof I'm talking amateur right now, but I'm trying to use everything to support this theory. When you look at MMA, I'm not sure that's true. To say that the South Koreans have exploded, I'm not sure that's true. We just saw the Russian invasion, and the Russian invasion started in about 2012. And most of us in the know knew if the Russians get involved, there's going to be a problem. If the Russians get involved in your promoter and you start signing a whole bunch of guys from Russia, you better be planning on marketing to Russian crowds because they're going to come in and they're going to grab a lot of the top spots. That's just what Russians do in sport, period. The Russians take sport extremely serious. Another country that takes it very serious, hasn't really got into combat, is Cuba. I've been waiting for the Cuban invasion, and it's starting to come, but not as fast as the Russian invasion. Go back to the Koreans and go back to the headline. I think somebody at bloodyelbow.com might have been a little drunk on the excitement of the weekend with Korean Zombie. I don't know that that's a fair statement to say that they're starting to take over. I don't know about that. It seems as though from the beginning of time and all the sports that I just laid out, and I went all the way back to Roy Jones. I'm sure I could go back further, but that's why I started this, okay? 88, Roy Jones was 1988, correct? Seoul, that was in Seoul, Korea, which is why largely they gave the Korean boxer the, the nod over Roy. The Korean boxer on the stand even looked at Roy while getting the medal and said, I did not win this. It's all he could do. I, I did not win. What can I do? I have to stand here. They say, well, he was cool about it. And Roy was cool about it and just nodded to him and didn't say a word, no sour grapes. I, I'm digressing back to that story in case you guys haven't heard it. But if I start this timeline at 1988, I move all the way here to just prior to 2020. I don't know about the explosion. I don't know about that. They seem as though since 1988, at the time of the story that I'm started, that they have done just fine. I'm keeping the Olympics in Taekwondo and the Judo, really well in Taekwondo and Judo. Fairly well in boxing, just fine in box, just well in wrestling. Nobody you could overlook. But outside of the zombie, I, in professional boxing or mixed martial arts in this case, and bloodyelbow.com is a mixed martial arts site. They cover all of combat. They're 99% mixed martial arts. I'm not sure where that question comes from, and I don't know if I agree with it. Now, the second part of the question, why has Japanese combat been left behind? That one has been surprising. That has been very peculiar if you to look at the history of martial arts. Brazil gets a ton of credit for mixed martial arts. Japan gets a ton of credit for all of martial arts. But if you look historically outside of Hollywood and the movies, I'm not totally sure where that comes from. And a lot of it is just the body and the philosophy 
of martial arts in Japan. They are very big into the respect and the bowing and the culture and the history and the philosophy of martial arts, much more about the movements than the actual combat. That seems to me that is one guy's opinion and perception. But I think it'd be a lot of yours opinion and perception as well when it comes to the actual combat and the fighting. I mean, look, that's one of the countries, even if you go to their uh, military, where they're extremely big and die for the cause. Well, yeah, man, you got to be big and to die for the cause if you're not good enough to win the cause. That's that's just a true statement. When you believe in that samurai spirit, we don't know a damn thing about that in America. We don't have to. We have other resources to turn to. If the Navy doesn't work, we'll bring in the Marines. If the Marines don't work, we'll bring in the Army. They're all going to have a tough time. We'll bring all damn three of them plus the special forces. We have other things to turn to. We don't have to talk our people into dying for the cause. We just don't. It's a different philosophy. And I think if you do look at it from that standpoint, you can see that's never really been a cult. You're talking about being left behind. I don't know that it ever had its stance. In boxing, I can't think of a Japanese champion in the professional circuit or in amateur. I'm sure it's happened. I'm sharing with you. I can't think of it. I can think Japanese of wrestling champions, both in Greco-Roman and freestyle. In fact, I could go back as recently as two that were in 2000, 2017, they had a world champion in the 55 kilogram division. Fantastic. In women's combat, Japan has ruled the world since they started contesting that. But again, I'm just giving you a wrestling heavy, amateur wrestling heavy approach to this. I'm not sure that the question that Bloody Elbow posed, why is Korean combat exploding and Japanese Korean combat being left behind? I'm not sure that it's even an accurate question, the first part or the second part. To give a response, I think that we would need an accurate question.